perspective on rational self-interest, laissez-faire capitalism, and individual rights. Yaron Brook, executive director of the Ayn Rand Institute, invites you to the conversation. The Yaron Brook Show starts now on AM 560. The answer. Hey, everybody. Hope hey, you're having a good weekend. A good weekend. And, uh, and uh, I am getting an echo. Getting an echo. All right. Uh, hey, hope uh, you're having a great weekend. Great and weekend and we will, uh, we will uh, I want to talk today about, talk today about why it is, why it is that, uh, that uh, so many, so many of, the of the policies that this administration, that this administration is trying to pass or claiming that they're trying to pass are just not getting just done. Not getting done. You know, nothing's, you know, nothing's, nothing's happening. Nothing's so, happening. You know, so, you know, Obamacare is, the, is, maybe the, the, is maybe the most obvious, most one. obvious one. We've got, we've, uh, got, uh, we, we've, we've, we've got this, we've got this obligation, obligation that the Republicans that the have Republicans made, that they are going to appeal, they're going to repeal Obamacare. They're going to do everything they can to repeal Obamacare. And this is what, you know, and they've been saying this for what, six years? Six years? And yet, and yet, nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, you know, we, they, they are they, putting, they plans are putting plans together. They're, they're fighting. fighting they're, they're arguing. arguing. You know, there's no consensus, no, there's no consensus plan. plan. They just leaked they a just plan, leaked plan that, that the Republicans are considering. considering. And it looks and like, it just, looks a like just a rehash, rehash of, uh, of uh, Obamacare. Obamacare. It looks like a just a. You know, improving you know, Obamacare. Improving and it leads, Obamacare. Uh, and it leads, Speaker uh, Boehner, Speaker former, Boehner Speaker Speaker of the House, former Speaker of the House, Republican, said that the Republicans would the Republicans actually not really do away with uh, Obamacare, and they would just, what did he say, build a conservative box around it, and they, they would fix Obamacare, that's it. He said that they would fix Obamacare. Why? I mean, this is just bizarre. This is the party that for six years has been telling us they are going to repeal and replace or repeal. They've even passed bills to repeal and replace Obamacare over and over and over again, of course, knowing that President Obama would, would veto it or that it wouldn't get through the Senate. And, and where's the Trump administration? I mean, this administration was supposed to be the administration that was going to get rid of the regulatory state. What did Bannon say the other day? Um, uh, not do away with, they were going to deconstruct the administrative state. Deconstruct the administrative state. I mean, that, that sounds fantastic. Why isn't it happening? At least with regard to Obamacare, why is it not happening? You would think that by now, they would at least have a plan on the table, or at least the leaked plans that the Republicans were considering would not look like a leftist proposal. We'll get to the details of this plan in a minute. And it's not just this. Do we really think we're going to see a significant change to the entitlement state that we live in? A significant reduction in welfare? Why is it, for example, the Republicans and, and the Trump administration have said they're not going to touch Medicare? Or, or, you know, why can't they touch Medicare? Now, there's politics involved, but not even flow to proposal? And, and they say they're going to cut regulations, and indeed, there's some executive orders that suggest that this is something they want to roll back. But I suspect very little is going to get done on that front as well. Something, something has to change in the American culture for us to actually really get serious about draining the swamp. I'm all for draining the swamp. And, and in this case, the swamp, in my view, is the welfare state and the administrative state. I want to get rid of regulations. I want to slash, cut, burn regulations. I want to cut welfare. I want to eliminate entitlements. I want to get Americans back to where they rely on themselves. They take responsibility for their own lives. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And, and again, why? Wasn't this supposed to be a, a, a revolutionary election? Didn't the revolution start with Donald Trump being elected? We were going to get a return to true personal responsibility, the foundational ideas and values of America. And unfortunately, the answer is no. N nothing's changed. I mean, we've got a president who's obviously different, and his rhetoric is different, and so much of what he said is different, and yeah, he's going to do different things. But in terms of anything fundamental, 
in terms of the ideas that the culture holds, nothing's changed. I mean, imagine, imagine if we said, you know what, people are, people are going to be responsible for themselves, and, and it's wrong. It's wrong. Uh, to, to, for, me, for me to get worse health care, for me to get to have to pay high premiums and in insurance so somebody else can get covered for pre-existing conditions. You know what? It's tough. Life is tough. Sometimes you get pre-existing conditions. It's going to make life difficult. Live with it. Suck it up and live with it. Charity, family, uh, you know, I believe, I believe that the, that the market would actually evolve products that would deal with people who have pre-existing conditions. But generally, imagine a campaign that said, or imagine a president or a congressman who said, you know what? It is wrong to force some people to subsidize the health care of other people. We believe in a free market. We're going to privatize everything. We're going to get rid of mandates. We're going to get rid of constraints on insurance companies. We're going to get rid of the requirement that you cover everybody, whether they're sick or not. Imagine, imagine if everybody had paid the same for fire insurance, whether you had a history of lighting fires, whether your house was made of brick or, for, or of wood or of concrete, didn't matter. Everybody paid the same rate in insurance no matter what. Well, that's what they want even with this repeal of Obamacare. That's what they want to happen with health insurance. And they're so uh, don't believe in the ability to have free market health care that the Republicans want to subsidize it as well, just like Obamacare through tax credits. But tax credits are fine. I'm all for tax credits. I'm generally for less taxes I pay, the better. But they want age-based tax credits so that they give more tax credits, I think, to younger people to encourage them to buy insurance so that the insurance get younger people who are then subsidized, or the government's really subsidizing through the tax credits, well, subsidize uh, old people's insurance. Why, why can't we really just say, why can't we just say we're going to let the market solve this problem? We don't have, we don't have government figuring out and subsidizing uh, smartphones for people, and somehow prices keep going down, quality keeps going up, and everything is cool, and the products get better and better and better and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and really, really, really good. Imagine what the government would do if they designed the iPhone. What would it look like? And yeah, when it comes to health care, no, no, we can't do that. Partially because we already have Obamacare, and they can't actually get rid of it because people are dependent on it, and you can't do anything that might be perceived as harming somebody. But that's the problem. We have welfare. We have Medicare. We have Medicaid. You can't get rid of them because they already exist. When, when uh, FDR put together the, 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 um, the New Deal, Republicans swore that they would undo everything he, he did because it was so harmful. And yet when they got into power, they kept it all. And when Johnson gave us the Great Society, the Republicans swore that they would undo everything. And now they're the biggest defenders of the Great Society. Why? Well, because fundamentally, we hold a moral view, an ethical view that says that your moral responsibility, your moral ethical responsibility in life is to take care of those in need. That the most virtuous thing you can do in life is to sacrifice for your neighbor who needs something, needs health insurance, needs health care, needs a basic wage, needs an education, needs whatever. And your moral responsibility, your deepest sense of ethics means that you have to help him. And all the government is doing, all the government is doing here is it's helping you be a good person. It's taking money from you. It's, it's reducing your options with regard to health care. It's making your insurance worse. It's making the availability of of health services for you worse, it's sacrificing you for the sake of people in need. And who can object to that? Again, we have learned from when we're this big that to be moral, to be good, is to be my brother's keeper. And when the government wants to force me to be my brother's keeper, that's okay because it's trying to force me to do something that's basically right. And as long as we don't challenge that morality, as long as we don't question that morality, then you can't say I'm going to repeal and, rep and, and move towards free market health care 
repeal Obamacare move because free market health care is going to require people to stand on their own two feet. Free market health care is going to mean that some people are going to be worse off, that some people's needs are actually not going to be met. And you're responsible for that. So, you know, this is why they go to the town hall meetings and yelling down Republicans and everything because they, they, they're expressing the fact that morally they find all this offensive. All right. You're listening to the Iran Brooks Show, and, and, and I want to present an alternative ethic, ethics to you. An alternative. An alternative which is consistent with freedom, with capitalism, and, and with private health care rather than government health care. You're listening to the Iran Brooks Show, and you can follow me on Twitter and on Facebook, Iran Brook, Y A R O N B R O O K. We'll be back right after this break. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer. From the Woodfield Nissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Ken Griffin taking a look at the roadways on the Edens for slowing in both directions. 25 Lake Cook to the junction, 20 back out to Lake Cook on the Kennedy, 37 O'Hare to downtown, 19 from Montrose, and then about 35 out to the airport, 10 to the junction on the Eisenhower, 45 Thorndale to the post office, 32 from Mannheim, that's heavy from Wolf to Oak Park, and look at about 36 back to uh, Thorndale. Stevenson is slow down, Ryan on in, 39 from 355, and 43 back to 355. Stevenson slow up on California to Cicero. To Dan Ryan, 22 in, 15 out, 57 to Bishop Ford, A-OK. -okay. Lakeshore Drive slowing right around the uh, Navy Pier area and also southbound as you approach the uh, Stevenson. And no delays right now in any of the uh, tollways out there. Roadways in northwest Indiana are also clear. AM 560 weather. Flurries are low at 24, currently 26. Our next update coming up in 15 minutes on AM 560. The answer. Do you own or run a business in Illinois that succeeded in this challenging economic environment? If so, we want to hear about it. AM 560's Business Tour 2017, presented by Signature Bank, will be highlighting business success stories. Tell us your story and be a part of a live broadcast of Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy. Find out more and submit your information at 560theanswer.com slash business. That's 560theanswer.com slash business. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit Ayn Rand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to Ayn Rand.org today. If you like what you hear on the Yaron Brook Show and want to engage more with host Yaron Brook, be sure to follow him on social media. Lucky for you, it's easier than ever to get updates, ask questions, and hear answers from one of the leading minds in objectivism. Follow Yaron today on Twitter, at Yaron Brook. YouTube, Why Brook. That's Twitter, at Yaron Brook. And YouTube, Why Brook. You can also sign up for show updates at Blog Talk Radio. Simply search the Yaron Brook Show. Dr. Timothy Goodwin here. If you want a flatter belly and haven't tried my new belly flattening breakthrough, Soma Biotics, yet, then I'm looking for you. Over 300,000 people are already loving their belly flattening results with Soma Biotics, but I want everyone to be able to try it. That's why I'm giving away free trials right now to everyone who calls in the next 10 minutes. As a doctor, I know many big bellies are actually just bloated bellies. That's why I help create Soma Biotics to flatten bloated bellies fast by cleansing pounds of rotting food and toxic sludge from your body. Made right here in the U.S. with natural ingredients. If your belly flattening results are too dramatic, reduce use to every other day. For your free trial, call in the next 10 minutes for details. 1-800-600-2811. Hurry, join the hundreds of thousands flattening their bellies while Dr. Goodwin is still giving trials away for free. 1-800-600-2811. Limit one per household. 1-800-600-2811. 1-800-600-2811. Intrigued, inspired, and possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brooks Show on AM560, The Answer. All right, today I, I, I want to challenge you a little bit because I want to talk about ethics. I want to talk about morality, and I want to challenge the conventional wisdom that morality is about addressing the needs of others, that morality essentially is about sacrificing and about being selfless. And as a consequence of this morality, the morality that we hold that I think is a false morality, um, the consequence of that is that we can't undo social programs. We can't undo 
regulatory regimes. Now, why, well, how is regulation res related to this? Because one of the things that this morality teaches us is that self-interest is evil, that people who engage in self-interest are bad people. And what's business about? Business is about self-interest. So therefore, it must be that businessmen are bad people, and therefore we need to regulate them. We need to control them. We need to look over their shoulder. So I, I think a lot of Republicans want to deregulate. They want to reduce welfare because they can see the evil that welfare is, and they can see the damage that regulations do. But because they cannot take a moral stand for free markets, because they can't take a moral stand for capitalism, then, you know, this is uh, the, the, the consequence of that is that nothing ever changes, that, that they can't win the battle, that they always lose. Republicans always, the free marketers always lose. All right, we've got, uh, we've got a call from Cuff. Cuff, I guess, uh, who um, think things are getting better or getting done. Hey, Cuff, how's it going? It's going all right, Urad, and they are getting done under President Trump. You know, you just said it's about self-interest, and that's exactly what President Trump is doing, because for the first time, he's putting us first. It's not immigrants. It's not everything else around the world. So give me an example of something that's actually getting done. What has he done? Done. He's, he's keeping the immigrants out. Oh, okay. And that is going to be, you know, he's going to take care of people uh, here at home, Americans first. And it's not going to be shifting, you know, it's, it's uranium for Russia, and then it's money to, the, to Iran, and he's going to take care of us at home. What's so wrong with that? Isn't that self interest No. Uh, thanks, Guffey. Thanks, thanks for calling. But no, of course not, because the whole point is that we don't want to get taken care of. I don't want people to take care of me. I want to be left alone. I want the burdens that the government has placed on me through regulations, through taxes, through welfare. I want to be unshackled. I want to be free. I want to be responsible for my own life. I don't need a CEO in Washington telling me how to live. I don't want some politicians telling me who to trade with and who not to trade with. I don't want some politicians penalizing me because I like German cause. But that's what our commander in chief wants to do. He doesn't want to attackle us. He's not trying to actually free us up. He's done nothing to actually deregulate, to actually give us. I mean, where's Obamacare? Obamacare should have been the first thing, right? This was the promise made. And yet already they're talking about we're going to keep pre existing conditions. We're not going to really change the exchanges that much. We're going to force insurance companies to cover X, Y, and Z. Free markets, anybody? Does anybody still believe in free markets? So I'm, I'm eager to hear what you guys think, particularly those of you who, who are Republicans. I, you know, I'm not a Democrat, certainly, and I hate the left. But I ain't no Republican because they're wimps, and they can't morally defend capitalism. They can't morally say that it's my right to live my life for my sake. And if you don't have health care, if you don't have health insurance, you have two options. You can kind of ask me for help. And I might help you, and I might not. Or you can pull a gun and take my stuff from me. And the fact that you're using a government to take my stuff from me doesn't change the fact that you're a thief. So Obamacare is evil because it takes my money and subsidizes somebody else's health care. If I want to help somebody, I'll help them. But it's not my moral obligation to do it. And it's not the government's job, certainly not the, any government's job, but it's certainly not an American government job to steal from me to give to somebody else. I think that's immoral, fundamentally immoral. Why? Because for me, morality is about my life. For me, morality is about living my life the best life that it can be. For me, morality is about leaving me free so I can make the choices necessary to pursue the values that I believe lead to a good life. So, you know, this morality of, of sacrifice, this morality of, of I owe my life to other people. And I go, why? Why should I owe my life to other people? I don't. I don't owe it. I don't owe them anything. My life is mine. And if I choose to have a relationship with another person, if I choose to help somebody else because it serves my life, because it makes my life better, then I choose to do it. But stay out of it. You don't get to decide who I help and who I don't help. You don't get to pull out a gun and force 
media help people, which is what the government does. Right. So, you know, and, and, and if I don't want to deal with a businessman because I don't trust him, I won't deal with him, but it's not the government's job. Unless the businessman is committing fraud, unless the businessman is, does something that's violated the law, it's none of the government's business. Regulations are not laws in the traditional sense. Laws used to protect us from fraud. Laws used to protect us from uh, people violating our, our rights, our property rights by stealing from us. Now we've got all these regulations controlling, you know, controlling our behavior, what products we can make, when we can make them, even how much we can charge on them sometimes. Some things are subsidized. Some things are taxed. Some things the government perceives as good. Some things the government perceives as bad. What about what I perceive? What about my choices? So I want a morality, a code that says that what we need is a code of values to achieve successful human individual life. And, and I really recommend you all agree or disagree. Read Ayn Rand, particularly read Ayn Rand's essay, The Objectivist Ethics, in a book called The Virtue of Selfishness. And it's not the kind of selfishness you typically think of. It's not the selfishness of doing whatever you feel like doing. It's not the selfishness of, you know, uh, stabbing your neighbor in the back. No. The most selfish thing you can do in life is to think. It's to focus. It's to figure out what is good for you in life. And it's about trade and cooperation and building and creating stuff. But it means that your primary moral obligation, your primary obligation in life is to live, is to be successful, it's to achieve happiness, it's to produce and to keep what you produce because you produced it, you did build it. So it get, it's yours, you get to keep it. Morality should be about reason, thinking and, and, and being rational and being honest and being, having integrity. And, 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 and treating people justly. Good people should get rewards. Bad people should get punishments. That's what justice means. It doesn't mean treating everybody the same. It means morality really means taking pride in your own achievements. What's wrong with pride? Pride's a great thing, as long as you've earned it. And pride is meaningless if you haven't earned it. There is no pride in the unearned. That's what people don't understand. Their welfare actually destroys the people receiving it because it destroys their ability to have self-esteem. They know when you give people free goods, free bees, they know they haven't owned it. They know they haven't deserved it. They know they're living off of the backs of other people, off of the work of other people. And that causes them to not have any respect for themselves, not have any self-esteem, not have any pride. And as a consequence, they can never be happy. So welfare is not just wrong because it takes my money by force from me, it steals. But welfare is wrong because it destroys the lives of the people who receive it. It makes them dependent. It destroys their self-esteem. It makes it impossible to for them to live productive, full, complete, successful lives. So I have very little hope uh, from this administration and these Republicans for actually moving us in any significant way towards free markets in medicine or in anything else. Yes, it's better than, they'll do better than the Democrats in the sense that the, the Obamacare, we'll call it Republican care that comes out of the revision, will be slightly more freedom-oriented than what Obama was and what Democrats would have done. But it's still way, way, way far away from what true free markets would look like, what a real free market healthcare system and healthcare insurance system would look like. All right, um, love to hear what you, what you think of all this, uh, what you think about morality, what you think about sacrifice, what you think about being self-interested, what you think about being selfless, and what do you think about Obamacare? What do you think the kind of healthcare system uh, that we should strive towards? What do you think the ideal should and would be? You can call in. 312-642-5600. You're listening to your Run Book Show. We'll be right back. Do you own or run a business in Illinois that succeeded in this challenging economic environment? If so, we want to hear about it. 
AM 560's Business Tour 2017, presented by Signature Bank, will be highlighting business success stories. Tell us your story and be a part of a live broadcast of Chicago's no Morning music Answer this time. with what Dan happened? and Amy. Find out more and submit your information at 560theanswer.com slash business. That's 560theanswer.com slash business. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. It's mostly thumbs up for President Trump and the way he's doing his job, according to the straw poll taken at this year's CPAC summit in Maryland. 86% approve. Only 12% are telling us they disapprove. In many ways, Donald Trump is the conservative movement right now. The conservative movement is Donald Trump. Pollster Jim McLaughlin, the polls also found that most approve of the way the president uses Twitter. Meanwhile, in Atlanta, the Democratic Party's chosen former Labor Secretary Tom Perez as the party's new chair. Hollywood honors the best in film tomorrow night. As for Tinseltown's worst, there's the 37th annual Golden Raspberry Awards. Razzies for short. And the winner or loser? Worst picture. <laughs> America, the secret history of the Democratic Party. Fox's Heather Curtis reporting. Fox News, we report, you decide. How can you get from here to there? We've got the answer from the Woodfield Nissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Ken Griffin taking a look at the roadways in Antioch. North Avenue shut down between Route 83 and Lakewood Drive. This is because of a car train accident out there. On the ice now, we're 25. If you're coming in, 20 back out to Lake Cook on the Kennedy. 37 will head to downtown and 30 to the airport on the Eisenhower. You're 42 from Thorndale to the post office, 29 from Mannheim, 27 to Mannheim, and 40 to Thorndale. Stevenson is 39 from 355 to the drive, about 43 going the other way. The Dan Ryan is 22 for coming in, 15 going back out. 57 is okay. The Bishop Ford at Stony Island inbound got a crash there. He's got the center lane blocked off. The uh, Lake Tower Drive is slow around the... Navy Pier area and southbound right around the uh, Stevenson tollways are okay. Not seeing any problems on the roadways in northwest Indiana. AM 560 weather flurries with a low of 24, currently 26. Our next update coming up in 15 minutes on AM 560. The answer. When the Fountainhead was first published more than 70 years ago, Ayn Rand's bold literary vision and groundbreaking philosophy of individualism captured the world's attention. Initially rejected by 12 publishers as too intellectual, the novel became an instant classic and continues to provoke heated debates. What motivates a creative thinker? Is it a selfless desire to benefit mankind, a hunger for fame, fortune, and accolades, the need to prove superiority, or is it a self-sufficient drive to pursue a creative vision independent of others' needs or opinions? Ayn Rand addresses these questions through her portrayal of Howard Rourke, an innovative architect who, as she puts, struggles for the integrity of his creative work against every form of social opposition. It's also the story of his love affair with a woman who seeks to defeat him. The Fountainhead is as relevant today as it was when Rand first penned it. The novel was also a personal landmark for Rand. In Howard Work, she presented for the first time the uniquely Ayn Rand hero, man as he could be and ought to be. Order your copy today at Amazon.com. The Ayn Rand Institute campus is an exciting online destination offering free e-courses on Ayn Rand and her revolutionary philosophy of objectivism. Whether you recently picked up your first Rand book or have been reading her novels and nonfiction for years, ARI Campus has something for you. On campus, you'll discover a variety of multimedia courses covering Rand's literary classics, specific aspects of thought, and how to apply her ideas to your life. Get started today at campus.aynrand.org. See you on campus. Objectivist Summer Conference 2017, or OCON 2017 for short, will take place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, June 10th through the 15th. The conference will be held at this historical center of industrial America and will celebrate productive heroes and the heroism of productiveness. They'll also honor the 60th anniversary of Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. The Ayn Rand Institute is offering a 25% discount on conference registration fees until February 28th. If you want to take advantage of the lower rates, now's the time to sign up. Experience the uniquely inspiring events only an objectivist conference offers. Register, and you'll have the opportunity to attend intellectually stimulating talks, panel discussions, and workshops with people who share your values. Visit objectivistconferences.com and sign up today. That's objectivistconferences.com. Students, you can apply for a scholarship to cover some or all of your expenses. See you at Ocon 2017. 
Mike Rowe here for one hour. Today, Chuck is jogging in place to make a point about energy efficiency. I thought I was training for a marathon. He's been at it now for... Uh, three minutes. And already, he's wearing out. I'm not. Your heating and air conditioning systems are a lot like Chuck. Warm, yet somehow cool? Mm, wheezing, wasting energy, and probably headed for replacement. You're talking about the air systems, right? Sure, pal. Sure. Call one hour before it's too late. Can you do the disclaimer for me? Each independent franchise is licensed in its respective state or county. Thanks. No traditional conservative view, nor the standard libertarian ones. Welcome back to the discussion of Ayn Rand's radical fundamental principles of freedom. This is the Yaron Brook Show on AM 560. The answer. Hey, before I forget and before I take this call from Mike, I want to mention that I'm going to be in Chicago uh, speaking at a public event, and you all invited. It's on Saturday, March 11th. Saturday, March 11th. It's at the W Hotel downtown, so in the loop. Uh, and um, the event is called Building a Future of Reason and Capitalism. And we've got a number of speakers coming uh, from the Ayn Rand Institute. Jonathan Honing is going to be there. Jonathan uh, is a Chicago native and uh, a, a good friend and a great advocate for the cause of freedom and capitalism and reason. And so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you all will show up. It'll be fantastic. And uh, you can get more details on the ARI website, ari.einrand.org. Go to events. Look at March 11th. Uh, you can find it there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, hope, hope all of you come. You can also look. You can also search Building a Future of Reason and Capitalism. There's a C-Vent page where you can register and everything. But it's at the W Chicago City Center on uh, March 11th uh, from 1230 till 530. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be so much fun. And I'm actually going to do this show live from the event in addition to uh, giving some talks and discussing ideas. And, uh, yeah, you should all show up. All right. Uh, we got Mike on the line who has a problem with Obamacare. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, Aaron. Uh, i got a question. I, uh, I, Ayn Rand, of course, was a, a laissez-faire capitalism. Yep. And uh, with the Obamacare... Uh, I believe there's a clause in there for uh, preconditions. People who have a heart attack, uh, this helps them uh, 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 to get insurance, uh, despite the fact that they have a heart attack. Because uh, a lot of insurance companies will not uh, take on a person with a heart attack. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't it. help them. It forces insurance companies to provide them with insurance. So it uses. I'm sorry, I can't you, hear you. Yeah, it forces insurance companies to provide them with insurance. It, it's the use of phys, uh, force of coercion in order to, for insurance companies to provide them with insurance with the people who have pre-existing conditions. Is that right? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I, I, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh, now I hear you better. Okay, so what I, I said is it, what ACA does is it forces insurance companies to provide these individuals with insurance. Right. But uh, what about this idea that I proposed or, or, or asked about? The idea that uh, if a person has a precondition or a condition, uh, he cannot get insurance. Yep. Uh, would you, you know, and of course, taking into account uh, Ayn Rand's laissez-faire capitalism, do you think it would be fair to allow uh, these people to go into like a lottery where they would uh, submit to? Many companies, and then the companies would pick out the lottery a, a person's name and give them insurance, because uh, normally a, 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 a person can't get insurance; yeah. they have to no. have precondition. I, I get it. Think, no, I don't think I don't think that would be fair because it would still force some insurance companies to give them insurance, and and I don't believe in force. I don't believe in mm -hmm. forcing businesses to do what is not in their self interest. So my view is. First of all, let me say this. In a true free market, if we really deregulated insurance and we deregulated health care, there would be innovative insurance products that would come about that would deal with the whole uh, pre-existing conditions issue. For example, you would, have, you would be able to buy, you know, I can buy a life insurance policy for 30 years. And if during those 30 years I get sick, it doesn't raise my premiums. I can guarantee a fixed premium through the 30 years. The market has evolved to do that. Even though when I get sick, my chances of dying have gone up, and the, health, the, the life insurance company, you would think, would want to charge me more. But they can't because I have a contract with them. Imagine if when you were born, 
you could you could buy a long term health insurance policy, maybe even a policy, insurance policy for life, uh, and and that that insurance policy was yours. It was portable. You would renew it every year, but the insurance companies committed in advance to not raising the premium based on your health condition. I that's a that's possibility of one product that could be created. Now it would be expensive because the insurance company would be taking on the risk of some more of people having of, of being sick and so on. So, but the bottom line is this: I don't believe in force, any kind of force. I don't believe in coercion. I believe in laissez-faire capitalism. And if some people are not going to get health insurance because they can't afford it, because they've got pre-existing conditions, whatever the issue is, you cannot force other people to pay for their insurance. It's tough on them. It's sad. What they will rely on is charity. What they're going to have to rely on is the hospitals being willing to commit them, even though they don't have insurance, and treat them. You're going to rely on, I don't know, the United Way or some... Uh, a uh, new philanthropic organization that provides them with a subsidy so that they can do, you know. So I believe, somebody asked somewhere else if I believe in a safety net. Yeah, I believe in a safety net that's voluntary, that is provided by us, that's provided by your neighbors, that's provided by your friends, that's provided by your family, I, I, that's I, provided by charity, uh, that it's voluntary. Yeah, I think that's, that's a possibility uh, in the future. I mean, uh, right now, uh, because the, the restrictions on uh, uh, hospitals and... Uh, I agree with you. So, so I agree. You have to massively deregulate and get rid of everything. Really appreciate your call. We're running to a commercial break. Keep on listening, Mike. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer. From the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Ken Griffin, taking a look at the roadway. Some limited service on the CTA Orange Line this afternoon, sharing the same track between Halstead and Roosevelt. Delays because of debris on the, on the lines earlier. On the, in Elgin, you're looking at an accident here on Chicago Street and a State Street on the expressways. Got a bit of a delay here on the Eaton's. This is an inbound between Peterson and Montrose, but otherwise it's okay. The Kennedy, 37, will head to downtown and... You're looking at about 26 back out to the airport. The Eisenhower is 32, Thorndale to the post office. And you're looking at about 36 back out to Thorndale. Stevenson gets heavy. Dan Ryan on into Lakeshore Drive, outbound from California to Cicero. The Dan Ryan is 22 in, 15 out, 57 to be sure Ford, both okay. Lakeshore Drive, a little heavy right around Navy Pier. AM 560 weather, flurries with a high of 33, currently 24. Our next update coming up in 15 minutes on AM 560. The answer. Somewhere in America, at just this moment, as you sit listening to this radio show, there's a young person waiting to discover Ayn Rand's novels, waiting to have his or her life changed by the beauty of Ayn Rand's art and the logic of her ideas. Through ARI's free books to teachers program, we have delivered more than 3 million copies of Ayn Rand's books to schools in every state. You can help us reach young minds today. Make your tax-deductible contribution now at aynrand.org slash support. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit AynRand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to AynRand.org today. The battle for philosophic change is a challenging one. It's a long-term educational effort and a battle the folks at the Ayn Rand Institute willingly undertake each and every day. In the year ahead, ARI is going to educate the public on key matters of policy facing our country and describe the work they're doing, especially with young people, to build momentum for a future that enshrines reason, individual liberty, and capitalism. You can hear from ARI's intellectuals in person about the great work in progress by attending this special event, Building a Future of Reason and Capitalism, in a city near you. Visit ari.einrand.org slash events to learn more. That's ari.einrand.org slash events. Don't miss this special event, Building a Future of Reason and Capitalism. Go to ari.einrand.org slash events for all the details. ari.einrand.org slash events. Intrigued, inspired, and 
possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brook Show on AM560, The Answer. Oops, Mike made a good point in the previous show, and that is it, it's hard to, to move towards free markets all at once and, and to, to, to shrug off everything, all the constraints. And, and yeah, it, it is. And I, I wouldn't argue for just getting rid of all uh, safety net immediately. I, I think we have to phase it out. But you see, you're never going to achieve that. You're never going to phase it out. You're never going to actually start moving in that direction unless you set that as your goal, unless you set that as your moral, political purpose. So I say my goal is to get to 100% free market health care. I don't want Obamacare. I don't want Medicare. I don't want Medicaid. I want free markets. I don't want the government subsidizing. I don't want the government subsidizing health care, subsidizing me, or subsidizing insurance. I don't want the government regulating insurance businesses. I don't want the government regulating pharmaceutical companies. I want a free market. And I think it's going to take, I'll make something up, ten year, eight years to get there, two terms to get there. Over the next eight years, I am going to systematically, if I were president, systematically reduce subsidies, reduce regulations, reduce constraint to allow time for a healthy, successful, prosperous markets to evolve, to develop, so that when I eliminate all constraints, all limitations, all government, we'll be fine. You can't do it all at once. I acknowledge that. You can't get rid of Social Security tomorrow. I don't believe you should. Some people completely rely on Social Security. They've been, you know, they, they've been told that it's forever, and, they, and they've completely planned their whole lives around it. Okay, so you take two generations to phase it out. But you tell people, it's going to be phased out. If you're 20, you're going to get nothing. If you're 40, you'll get a little bit. If you're 55, you'll get more. And if you're 65, maybe we keep it the way it is. But if you're 20, zero, start saving. That's the only way we can ever get sanity in this country. It's the only way. It's the only way. We can actually get to the point where these programs start shrinking. We have to set the goal of eliminating them, not chinkering, not chopping a little bit at the edges, actually eliminating them. And for that, we need to have a confidence we need to be able to say free markets are good. They are moral. They are just. Why? Why are they good? Why are they moral? Why are they just? Because they leave the individual free to pursue his own values, free of the burden of his neighbors. He can choose to take on that burden, but we're not going to force it on him. Free of the burden of his neighbors, free of the burden of government, free of the controls, the regulations, free to choose his own path in life because the purpose of life is not to sacrifice. The purpose of life is not to be selfless. The purpose of life is to live. And to live, we need to be free. We need to be able to make choices for ourselves. When I go out and make money, when I make $100,000 or $50,000 or whatever you make, it's yours. By what right, by what moral right do people just take it away from you? By what moral right do they decide that they know how to spend your money better than you do? But what right do they decide that your money is better spent on, on, on giving uh, uh, insurance to somebody with pre-existing condition than it is for you to, to send your kids to a college or to, or to a good private school or, or to buy them food or to buy them nice sneakers? I don't know. Whatever you spend your money on. It's nobody's business what I spend my money on. And it's my money. And the government takes it. And I want that to stop. I don't know. I'm asking for a lot, I guess. Too much you're on, you're too radical. I know, I know. But, you know, I'm, 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 and this is what America used to be. <laughs> the government did not redistribute our wealth in the 19th century. The government didn't get involved in your decisions about how to live your life, for the most part, in the 19th They made mistakes. We had slavery and other mistakes. But for the most part, they left us alone. You know what? It was the greatest boom, economic boom in human history. And people flooded into this country because it was so free and so wonderful and so great to live in. And we didn't resent immigrants because we weren't subsidizing the immigrants. So we weren't paying them welfare to come here because there was no welfare. So I say eliminate the welfare state. 
eliminate entitlements. Now, again, it takes time. You have to phase them out. But, but you have to know where you're heading. And you have to convince the people that where you're heading is a good thing. And I don't see any political will to do that. I don't see any political leadership for this agenda. And that makes me sad. All right. You're listening to your run book. So, you, you know, if you want to chime in on, you know, what do you think about the welfare state? Should we eliminate completely? Should we keep a safety net, a, a, a public safety net, a government safety net? Should we continue to regulate businesses uh, as much as we do today? 312-642-5600. 312-642-5600. You can get in the conversation. What do you think about the ethical code that says that your moral responsibility in life is to sacrifice. I say that's evil. I say that's evil. And, and, and it puts me in conflict with almost all religion. It puts me in conflict with most philosophy professors. I say your moral obligation in life, your moral obligation, your ethical obligation in life is to live, to figure out how to live successfully, to pursue the values that are necessary to be successful in life. You get one shot at this, one life. It's a crime. It's immoral if you don't make the most of it, if you don't live life to the fullest, if you don't attain flourishing. That, in, me, that in my view, is sad. And, you know, if that involves, and as it does sometimes, helping other people, go for it. But uh, don't force me to help people I don't want to help. Don't tell me what my value should be. All right. You're listening to the Ron Book Show. We'll be right after, right back after this messages and take a call. I think. Rise and Fall, a new podcast from the Ayn Rand Institute, explores the power philosophic ideas have to shape the world and our individual lives. In each episode, host Amanda Maxim chooses a theme and then digs into the Ayn Rand Institute audio archives. That's where every lecture, radio program, course, and Q&A from objectivist voices that were caught on tape over the past 50 years wait to be uncovered. She takes these gems and weaves them together with commentary and original interviews. The topics of these podcast briefs are varied, from genetically engineered mosquitoes to Christmas, from Islamophobia to courtroom justice. But no matter the topic, Rise and Fall looks at many subjects through the lens of philosophy, namely how ideas move and shape the world. Listen today at einrand.org slash rise and fall. One woman, one microphone, one key to the Ayn Rand Institute audio archives. A volatile stock market, out of control national debt, domestic and global events. Can your retirement survive? Listen to Grow My Retirement Saturday afternoons at 2 with Bill Geiger of Geiger Wealth Management. Bill translates today's complex retirement issues into easy to understand steps to help you create a retirement income you can't outlive. This is serious stuff. Grow My Retirement Saturday afternoons at 2 here on AM560 The Answer. Hi, I'm Josh Rosen, the host of Garden Sense. When salt was used on the road or driveway, the salt may have ended up on the lawn. You should apply granular gypsum to neutralize the damaging effects of that salt. Make the gypsum application after the snow has melted. Also apply kickstart at that time. And two weeks later again, this will help the root system grow new root hairs. I'm Josh Rosen. Garden Sense is heard every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on AM 560, The Answer. Yaron Brook, Executive Director of the Ayn Rand Institute, speaks to audiences around the world, promoting Ayn Rand's ideas in talks and books. Now, he's on your radio, here on AM560, The Answer. All right, you're listening to Yaron Brook Show. We've got, um, oh, we've got a liberal Trumpster. This is cool. I, I, I didn't know that existed. Hey, Edward, how's it going? Hello, Mr. Brooks. Yeah, I am a liberal Donald Trump fan. Uh, I've Actually, if I can race. say if I can say something, I'm not really surprised because I consider Donald Trump's economic policies as all leftist. I, I don't think he's a I don't think he's a pro capitalist at all. I think he's a liberal when it comes to economics. He could be whatever it is. I I like him because he hates government, and so do I. 
but I hate it for a different reason than you do. You don't like government programs, correct? You don't like. I don't like people employed. telling me what I can and cannot do and pulling a gun to tell me that, and that's what government does. Government uses a gun to tell me what I can and cannot do, and I don't like that. Okay, what I don't like about government is the fact that government employees are overpaid and underworked, and when they leave, they get a pension we cannot afford to give them. It's not welfare, unemployment, and Social Security that are bankrupting the country. Oh, it is. It's the size of our government and the cost of its employees. It is. I mean, I agree with you about its employees and the size of it, which is nutty. But the, what's bankrupting America, and you can run the numbers on this, what's bankrupting America unequivocally is Medicare. Medicare is, will consume every tax dollar raised within the next 10 years. Social every Security single dollar raised will go to penny. Medicare. All right, but Social Security doesn't cost a penny, right? No, Social Security is a huge negative starting in about a year or two. It will increase the deficit constantly. Social Security is an, a massive immoral pyramid scheme. But which how, which how transfers wealth from young people to old people. But how can it cost us money when it's got $2.7 trillion in the bank? It doesn't, because that $2.7 trillion was spent by the wonderful government. It was already spent. So what they have in the bank are IOUs that the federal right. government has written that the government owes Social Security $2.7 trillion. But, and it should pay it. Yeah, but it can't, money. because it, the only way it can pay it <laughs> is to raise taxes on young people or to borrow money, which means raising taxes on future generations. So any way you look at it, it's a massive redistribution of wealth from young people to old people, and it's unbelievably immoral. It's a pyramid scheme. It always was a pyramid scheme. It's just now with the but baby the money, boomers the are retiring. Money is old. You said that yourself. We see it. The money is owed by the government to Social Security. It should pay its debts. Oh, it? I'm fine with the government paying the debts, but remember, what is government? Government is me and you. If we take taxes, well, we are the government. The government has no money. All the government has is the ability to steal our money and redistribute it. So what you're saying is the, the way to pay up back the $2.7 billion in debt is to steal more money from us so that we can shift that money to people who paid into the Social Security system. Either way, any way you cut this, it's well, ridiculous, let me say and this. it's immoral. The money's owed to Social Security. Social Security did By not whom? government to borrow. By whom is it owed? It's owed by... The United States government. Who it's is the United States the government? Money. Who funds the United States government? We're going to have to fund it. Yeah, I know. And that's wrong. And that's awful. They should have spent it to begin with. And this was inevitable in the structure of Social Security. As I said before, Social Security is a pyramid scheme. Pyramid schemes always well, fail. They are a disaster. And that's what's happening with Social Security. And all these schemes are wrong. They're bad. They're immoral. Thanks for the call. Really appreciate it. But we're literally running out of time. 20 seconds or so. So... Look, my broader point is this. If you care about your life, what you want is to make choices for yourself and not have others dictate it. My, my objection to government is the fact that they coerce. They use force to force me to do things I do not want. You've been listening to the Iran Brook Show. Come back next week. We will challenge everything you believe again then. Talk to you soon. This has been the Iran Brook Show. Thanks, Doug. See you sometime. <laughs> Hopefully they'll fix the technical stuff.